Welcome to the second video in the series setting up a local development environment for WordPress. In this tutorial I'm going to explain how to set up a subdomain and we're also going to explain the root directory of the server a little bit more. First I'm going to navigate to WAMP and everything underneath the www folder is going to be the public folder so every, everything will be seen underneath www. If there are files that you don't want to be seen, that you don't want seen on your local server, then you would probably put them before the WW folder and after WAMP. So now just to show you what's going on inside this directory, we will take a look in there. And don't forget to turn on your WAMP server at this point. And here we have the landing page of the WAMP server. Um, you can see your projects are here. I have the .back folder and I'm going to add a new folder and for these purposes of this tutorial we're going to call it WordPress. Now if I refresh this page I see, I see a WordPress project. Now I'm just going to go in here and create a simple page, a uh, simple HTML page. and I'm going to edit this just to say something simple for testing purposes. Okay, now that that's public we can navigate to localhost slash wordpress and we'll get to the index.html file. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and set up our subdomains. So we'll start walking through that a little bit. First you want to navigate to your C, WAMP, bin, Apache, Apache, um, conf, extra, and then you want the vhost, httpd vhost.conf. So the path is right here and we'll go ahead and open up that file for editing and down here at the bottom are the two main blocks that we're actually interested in. Actually I'm not really interested in this first one. Um, I do want to edit this one so that it reflects to our local host. Okay what I'm going to do is set up two definitions for the local host and we're going to just start editing here in the conf files the hashtag is actually a comment tag so we want to comment out. I'm really not interested in the custom logs right now just you'll get familiar with this later you'll be able to set this up exactly how you want to uh, you'll develop your own environments uh, just for these purposes we're just going to do a very simple basic so the document root is actually c wamp www and the server name is localhost and the server alias is also localhost okay now we have that block set up for the localhost and we're going to create a new definition for um, our subdomain for the wordpress subdomain so uh, let's just delete this and delete these two. And the document root is actually going to be slash WordPress. The server name is localhost. Server alias will be WordPress.localhost. Okay, now we're done with this file. We can save it and close it. And I will close that one. Uh, now the file that we're interested in is going to be the httpd file which is located in conf um, and then httpd conf. Okay now we have to enable the vhost file so what we're going to do is search for vhost and I already have it there and this this line include conf extra httpd vhost conf um, I told you the hashtag was a comment out we want to uncomment that so that we can use the vhost file then save and we can close that we're done with that 
And now there's just one last thing to do, and that is to go into your local directory. Uh, so it's C, Windows, uh, System32, Drivers, ETC, and then we want to edit this host file right here. So let's see if I can just grab that into Notepad. Okay, now here is where we're going to add our subdomain. Um, you already see the local host set up, so I'm just going to copy that. And here we can just point it back to the local host. Um, we already set up the vhost to uh, as sort of our dispatcher, so that when it receives WordPress.localhost, it'll know exactly where to dispatch you, which will be the WordPress directory. So we'll just set up the WordPress.localhost for the local subdomain. Um, save that, and we can close and make sure that you restart WAMP. I like to just exit completely out but you can obviously left click and just restart the services so now let's take a look and see if we have our WordPress subdomain wordpress.localhost and yes it goes to the WordPress directory uh, the, the reason I like to do this is because I don't normally like to have the uh, folders at the end of the localhost so that my projects can be treated as root root projects. So, for instance, if I go to localhost slash WordPress, now in the WordPress install, I have to tell the database that we're actually installing it into a slash WordPress folder. Um, but if you do a subdomain, then it will actually just look for the root folder. Uh, it's a lot simpler, it's a lot cleaner, and that's how I like to do it. Uh, join me next time for the next video. Uh, hopefully we're going to get into creating the databases for WordPress and maybe doing some cool things on installs.